We go out to Oregon, near Portland, Lake Oswego. Do you go swimming in Lake Oswego at all? No, I don't. It's only for people who have homes on the lake. This the rest is, of us are to laugh. Uh, this is, of course, uh, ex-wife and the proprietor of timegoesby.net. Her name is Ronnie Bennett. Yeah. Hi there, dear. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How about you? Yeah, well, at least I'm not an immigrant child stuck in a detention center. Oh, don't <laughs> get me started. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. It's just... And I just watched the president. This is Monday we're recording this. I just watched the president tell us that it's all Obama's fault again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, we can't figure out exactly how every every news I mean, person. I'm laughing, but it's it's just well, awful. Every every news person in America, and I think this even includes Fox, is trying to see the logic in that. You know. These were laws that were set years ago, and they didn't. Uh, they didn't. Uh, it wasn't about incarcerating kids, okay? It was about protecting kids. Uh, well, there's uh, that one photograph. You only see the little girl in oh, profile, yeah. you know? Um, and, and you don't even see who she's standing next to. But you can tell that she's crying and she's terrified. And I, when I look at her, I can almost really, really remember what it was like to be that size and be scared of something. Yeah. Now, obviously, I've yep. never been in the kind of position these kids are, but certainly there were plenty of things to be scared of when I was little, and I remember that scariness. And and now imagine you don't speak the Engl the language where you are. You've been walking with your mom and dad for days and days and days, and it's hot and you can't cool. And now you're in a cage, and they took your mom and dad away. What, what are we doing? We're, we're terrible. This is not the America I signed up for, you know? No. I mean, we're, we're not America anymore. We're not this, this, we have nothing to be proud of, okay? No, not much, yeah. not much. Yeah. 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 Yep. It's pretty yep. terrible. Yep. yep. At least some people are responding, you know? Who knows what'll happen with this president, but at least people are responding. So much that goes on that is so awful just goes by us. Nobody pays any attention and we're on to the next. Yep, yep. So anyway, so how's, oh, I have a slight slap back here. Let me get rid of that, okay. Uh, so how is everything out there with your life? It's going good? Well, it's an interesting week. Yeah? Um, as I said, we're recording this on Monday. Wednesday will be the one year anniversary of my surgery. That was for pancreatic cancer. It was called the Whipple procedure. It's a very big deal to get this far. Mm -hmm. Hardly anybody does. And it's a real, really important um, to me. <laughs> you know? It's important, to, it's important, it's what important to me. It's important to me, too. I mean, I want to see you live a while. And, uh, and what they did, you know, was cut me open from here to here, my whole front and take out a bunch of pieces and whole organs and a few parts of others and then rearrange everything and um and it's the worst thing that ever happened to me ever it's a real life game of operation <laughs> remove the kidney remove the yeah oh i don't remember that. <laughs> I don't, don't remember the operation is. game oh. um and you know the doctor had been or the surgeon had been absolutely honest with me up front about how awful the recovery would be but he didn't begin to make a dent in what or i didn't really get it i guess it was the worst two months afterwards of my life yeah nothing comes close and there were many many times i woke up in the morning and why did i do this i should have just died and then it got better and better and better little tiny little increments at a time but then five months ago, after some tests, the surgeon said that there was no cancer showing in the test. And so each of the tests have shown since then. So I'm one of the lucky ones. You know, um, I made it this far. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly aware that um, it often comes back, um, not always in the same place. And, uh, and and that changes. I, I'm different. I'm not real sure how I'm different, but 
I'm different in that that is part of my life now. And for, you know, I've been so lucky for 75 years, the worst that ever happened to my health was a bad flu, the worst. Yeah. And this was such a shock that, um, well, you, uh, you were, you were, and, and now I yeah. live with it and I don't know what I'm different, but I'm not real clear about how yet. Well, you were dealt a, uh, a death blow, actually. I mean, pancreatic cancer, whenever that's the analysis, is usually they tell you to go home and just, you know, sort things out. You know, there's <laughs> no way to cure it, right? And yet there was a cure for yours. And, uh, it's not, uh, we're not well, calling well, well, okay. it a cure. Okay, there was an operation Nobody for yours. Nobody calls it a cure for at least five years. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's just there's no evidence of cancer right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I went through all this other stuff of an internal bleed and then a clot and they had to put stents in. I had no idea stents were for anything but hearts, but yeah. they are for other things, too. Oh, yeah. And that's worked out really well. The, the solution the doctors found seems to be working very well. So that's good. Now, you, and, you, um, you were a smoker at one time. And I'll, oh, I'll, for I'll, a long time. I'll, I'll explain why in a second. But uh, you, you quit, right? So that oh yeah, that was the second worst thing I ever went through quitting. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, thank you so very much because guess who started me smoking? I didn't like the cigarette. Uh, it, we, you, I was trying to impress you, and I, in fact, I think I even smoked what you were smoking, which was Newports. Oh God, when was that? A hundred years ago. Right? <laughs> I started on a, but you're the person. If anybody says to me, "Who started you smoking?" I'm. I have to oh, say, it was Ronnie. Who asked a question like that? Well, I mean, when I was a smoker, somebody asked me that. They don't haven't asked me in the last what, 25, 26, 27 years. I don't know how many years it is now that I haven't smoked. You know, but that was the most. That was the best decision I ever made. Was to quit. It was awful for me. Yeah, I went to it, bed for five days. I couldn't get out of bed and cried a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really, and I still—it's years and years—and I still miss smoking. There are times, particularly, I'm sitting here at the computer and I'm trying to write something for the blog, and I don't know where to go from here. And I think, oh, I would love a cigarette, Jeez, you know. Yeah, I never, I never get that feeling. Never get that feeling. Once I quit, uh, well, my way of quitting was I—I I didn't say I'm quitting because that—that's that that's sure failure i said i'm going to see how long i can go without smoking oh you know before i finally did i tried everything out there i did hypnosis i did patches i did those little pills you can buy yeah i i've forgotten what all well, i did the little are. pills i did the little pills of vantrons that helped i don't remember what they were called but i know that that it was like an overdose of nicotine they made me feel awful yeah um and I um, <clears throat> and I actually quit now and again for <clears throat> excuse me for a year or two, and then you know so that's why I don't dare go near all since the final quitting I don't dare go near a cigarette because in the past after I'd quit for a year or two, get near one I'd have a cigarette and that would be it I'd go buy a pack so I just have to keep my well you distance. don't want to do it today because a pack costs so much goddamn money you'd be broke. Well, what does it cost these days? Here in New York, a pack of cigarettes, ready for this, hold on to your, whatever you're holding on to, 11 <laughs> bucks. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that'll stop you, won't it? <laughs> yeah. So if you have a two-day, uh, two-pack-a-day habit, you're spending $22. But why, why would the government or whoever sets those things, why would they do that? If you're going to charge that much, just outlaw cigarettes. Well, you're get, you're getting pretty close to the point where you're going to get uh, like like black market cigarettes. It's going to be like prohibition, you know. Uh, but uh, in fact, there was a guy here who was selling illegal cigarettes, and he got shot t to death by the police department here. Or they choked him. That was the guy they choked. What? Yeah, they what, grabbed what him. I hope that the, the cops were arrested and prosecuted. I can't remember what happened exactly, but they... they I don't think selling cigarettes is an executable offense. Well, that's right, but they grabbed him or something, and they took him down to the ground and were choking him by the neck, and he said, I'm choking, I'm choking. He passed out, and he died. Oh, that was the guy in Queens. Yes, he was selling yes. cigarettes. That's what That yes. was his... Uh... I remember that. 
I yeah. remember that. A terrible, terrible thing. He was selling, what do they call them? Singles. Yeah, yeah, he would like sell a single cigarette. Yeah. 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 I remember that. That was an awful, awful thing. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of awful things going on lately. So, you know. But uh, but you started me smoking, so but I quit. So, but I I, I I was very very good at quitting stuff. Do you remember we quit once in Chicago? And I don't remember. I, I remember I quit for about six weeks, and then I went. Ah, I got it made. I can have a cigarette now. And then it was nah. another. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> now, you know, I know. I certainly learned that about me. I cannot even have one. Yeah. Not one. Well, it was even, it was like another 15 years of smoking again. So I quit once, and then I went back, and then I quit again in San Francisco in, I'm thinking it's like 1982, maybe, that I that I uh, quit. And I've, uh, I've quit, I uh, never smoked since, so, yeah. You know, when we were growing up, and, you know, especially hitting teenage years and going to movies, um, the movie stars of the day and the movies that were made of that in that era yeah. made smoking cigarettes so glamorous. Yeah. Um, that if you know if you were going, I don't think the phrase was around then, but if you were going to be one of the cool kids, um, you were going to smoke cigarettes. That's what you did. You know, you smoked cigarettes and drank martinis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember. I had a wonderful scene. I think the movie's Dark Victory with Betty Davis when. Yeah. I've forgotten the male actor, but he lights two cigarettes and then hands one to her. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, they just made, the movies made smoking so sexy. Oh, well, you want to talk about something else. How about the times when you went to uh, your doctor's? And oh, I used to sit after he'd examined me. Yeah. We'd go in his office after I got dressed again, and then he would offer me a cigarette, and we'd sit there smoking and talk about my health. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, it, but it, it, that was great. That was the doctor smoking. That was the, one of the one of the great things of all time. And uh, I mean, it's just that cigarettes were such a part of our lives. You know, here's what happened: uh, uh, cigarettes. We didn't. I don't think the tobacco companies knew cigarettes were dangerous. I mean, in the you don't think what? Say that again. The, the, the tobacco companies thought that cigarettes were dangerous. I think in the beginning. They had this misguided idea that it was okay, okay, and it was their business. It was when uh, suddenly, after many, many years of people smoking a lot of these pre-made well, cigarettes, the Surgeon General's report in well, 1958. Yeah, that started that the, the change. But it wasn't until then that we started to see the cancers show up as a result of smoking, because the kind of smoking we were doing had increased because of the of the mechanic, the uh, what can we call the manufacture of the cigarettes. Right, you know, you get them pre-made. You don't have to roll them anymore or anything like that. So we just smoke, no, smoke sure more. Unless you were smoking weed. And it wasn't until '58 <laughs> that we started to see the consequences. And then, of course, the the tobacco companies went into a state of denial, which they still are. Yeah, which they still <laughs> are. You know, they still do very well over in Europe and places like that. You know, but uh, uh, we we pretty well. We pretty well knocked out smoking in in this country. I think I, I, it's it's not considered uh, uh, socially acceptable to smoke any longer, and I think that's and there's hardly anywhere in public that you can smoke anymore. It, it, well, that they did that too. I mean, it started. One of the reasons I quit in 1982 is when they started saying you can't smoke in movie theaters anymore, <laughs> and I got tired of missing two thirds of the movie because I was out having a cigarette. You know. <laughs> Um, so I, I said I quit out of self-defense, but they did make it difficult for you, you know. They did not make it easy for you to, to smoke any longer. And, that, and that's still so. Yeah, and of course now as I say, the price at 11 bucks a pack, I'm sorry, I, I, I wouldn't be smoking. You I know. wonder if it's the same in all states. I don't know. I, I, think, I think if you were to check, you see, you don't know what the cost of cigarettes is because you don't buy them anymore. Right. Like I don't know the cost of gasoline because I don't have a car. You know, uh, but it's gone I, up this summer. <laughs> but, yeah, but I can I can ask you how much gas costs, and you can tell me without hesitation. Except I want to tell you about being an old lady and driving. Mm -hmm. Is that when I was a kid, there used to be a joke about um, um, about used cars dealers that, that they would try to sell somebody a used car by saying it was owned by a little old lady who only drove it to church on Sunday. Yeah. In my case, I don't spend too much for gasoline, whatever the price. Because it's driven by me, a little old lady who only goes to the supermarket. 
Well, I have my friend Shecky, who has a car that's 22 years old mm -hmm. and has 50,000 miles on it. That's like my car. Mine is 12 years old, and it has 41,000 miles really? on it. Really? And, and it had 11,000 when I bought it when it was two years old. And you drove it across the country once. No, I had it shipped. I didn't drive it across the oh, country. Oh, you had it shipped? Why didn't you drive it? Well, because, you know, there was the cat, and, the, you know, it was going to be difficult. And so it was the easier to The cat didn't have like cars? Pardon me? The cat didn't like cars? Well, you know, you were I, because he wasn't used to it. The two cats we had, we trained them to be okay in the car. But Ollie was a New York City cat. What did he know about cars? Yeah. So he would have he would have had to be in a container all day long on the road. I didn't think that was fair. And then you have to stop and get out the litter box and the food and the water. But I didn't want to do that for three thousand miles. But you put him in the bottom of a plane. Well, but it's much faster. I guess. It's not days and days and days. Did he ever forgive you for that trip? I mean. <laughs> I don't know. You know, you know that he's no longer with uh, us. Yes, Did right, I tell you right, that? right. Okay. Yeah, right, yeah. I miss him. I still think I hear him half the time. <laughs> you know? I think I see him out of the corner of my yeah, eye. Yeah, I know that feeling. I've had that happen with cats I've loved. You know. Also with people, I was once a friend had died, and a few days later, I was walking across Father Demos Square near Sixth Avenue in in New York, and I looked across the street. I was going to cross, and I thought I saw Peter. And I knew he had died the week before, and look, I thought I saw Peter there. It was the oddest thing. Well, I mean, I, uh, 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 I know that feeling of feeling, that, you know, you've had a cat around the house constantly, and all of a sudden yeah. he's not there, and somehow you, you feel still feel his presence, you know. You yeah. do, you do. And then, of course, you keep finding toys he left somewhere in a corner, <laughs> things like that. Oh, well, he was how oh, I missed him. Some people said I should go out and get another kitty right away. And I tell them, well, you know, if I had a husband and he died, I wouldn't go out and get a new one right away, and I want some time. Well, my question and, to you is, I mean, um, uh, you know, uh, how old was Ollie when he went? 14, 14 almost 14. So 14, 15, pretty good for a cat. You but know. my other cat, Bo Bannon, lived to be almost 20. So I didn't expect this. I was expecting Ollie to live as long as Bo Bennett. <laughs> well, Shabbos, who was our cat, lived to yes. be 18. Yeah. yeah. Cats live a lot longer than most dogs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Especially house cats. But yeah. if I am going to have another cat one day, and I'll know when the time comes, I'm going to look into adopting an y old you cat. You were saying that. You were saying that uh, a while back. And uh, yeah. part of the reason is, is of course, you know, you, you, you have a certain, uh, uh, you, you don't know what your sell-by date is. and uh, <laughs> I'm assuming it's shorter in my case than it used to be. <laughs> but you don't know what your sell-by date is. And so if you get a, if you get a, a kitten, uh, you're probably never going to be around for its full life, even if you live to be like, what, 90 or whatever, you know. Yeah, hey, listen, 90 is only 13 years away from me, you know? Yeah, well, 19 is only 11 years away from me, so. So, uh, but if but, I got an old no. cat, you know, Excuse maybe me, we would die about the age. You know, Ollie was hard to get along with. He wasn't a lap cat. He didn't like to be pet. Um, if I pet him too much, he'd bite my hand. Um, and so I used to worry that... If I died from, especially after they told me I had pancreatic cancer, I used to worry that if I die, you know, will anybody else take him? Because he's hard to get along with. Um, and, you know, the only good thing about it, a little tiny good thing, is I don't have to worry about that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh. That's, but I still miss him. Just of course every you of Well, day. he was very much a part of your life, you know. I remember when you got him. He came yeah. from Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh, well, he used to stay with you. Yes. you. Remember that time you took, I can't find it, but you sent me a photo of him sitting all sprawled on the sofa with a can of beer or soda or something. I still have some pictures. I, I still have those pictures. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he was, uh, he, but he was always very standoffish until I started working at the computer, and then he would start biting my legs. 
you know, and and he just used to bite my ankles if I didn't feed him fast just, enough. Just about the time, just about the time you were about to pick him up, you know, you were coming back from wherever you were, he would be very warm and nice to me, and then you show up, okay, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I didn't stay away long enough. No, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I think you he knew me I, that I might have stayed long. I think he time. knew you were coming back, but he he was a he was a he was a difficult. I'm I'm good at getting cats to like me. And he was a difficult cat to get to like you, you know. He, well, you know, he was one sixth wild serval, and I always wondered if that had anything. Oh, that to has do a lot to do with his standoffishness. It's also, only fifteen percent, but still, it's more than not. It probably had a lot to do with his uh, death at at fourteen, too. This is the fact that he was a, a you know a very inbred breed or whatever that is, you know. Uh, but uh, okay. it, it, let's explain. This was a uh, what do you call it? A savanna. They call the cat. Savanna cat. Yeah, savanna cat, and they're half serval, or part serval and part house cat. And I can't remember what breed Not of house. Not house cat. They're um, they're a, a breed of of I can't remember. The breed won't come to my blame old age right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, and some you know there was there was a pair of cats, brothers and sisters, who lived near me in New York. Who were 50% serval, and wow, a they were beautiful, but I, it's scary in the way that that you don't want to be up close. People and used to walk them in the animals. people used to walk them in the neighborhood with a leash. Yes, you did. Yes. Yeah, and they were huge. That's how I knew them. They were used, my, uh, another one of my ex-girlfriends, uh, who I went to see in Cleveland, had gotten a serval. Uh, she was a sec. Uh, Not a serval. Well, I mean, a, a savanna. You mean a savanna, yeah. A savanna. And uh, this cat was huge. Just huge. Yeah, so and I would w- I would wake up in the morning, the cat would be standing on my chest, I could barely breathe, staring <laughs> at me, and it was like I was in the jungle, and some jungle cat was about ready to devour me. Yeah, they, I've come to not believe in hybrids. I think we should leave wild, wild, and domestic, domestic. Um, and by and the way, I, I had a, that kind of cat again. I had a, a, a our ex cleaning woman, also had a savanna. Oh, yeah. they are beautiful. They're no, hard they're to beautiful resist. Cats. <laughs> they're beautiful they cats. Gorgeous. They're beautiful cats, but they are uh, they're they're a bit of a uh, they're difficult. Are they all, or is it just mine? I don't know. I I think they all are kind of difficult, you know. Although I don't know the one my ex girlfriend had was he difficult? I don't think so particularly. You know, it seemed like it was And we came to understand each other, Ollie and me, but to a degree. Every once in a while we'd have an argument over the way yeah. we wanted things done. Yeah. But um, but as long as I didn't pet him too long, he wouldn't bite me. I know, well, said, you know, it was kind of like one of those been there, done that when she showed me. Oh, I've got this unusual cat. And I went, <laughs> nah, I've seen those before. My, ex- my ex-wife has one, you know. And uh, so. So, you know, it's a little lonely around here without him. Yeah, I don't know. I've just never gotten a cat in the last many years because of uh, on the on the eighth floor of a building, and my wife loves to leave the windows open. Oh, you mentioned that. Yeah, when we were yeah, talking. and we, yes. we 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 have a cat. We cat sit, and then I put screens in all the windows because I have this this terrible fear of the cat committing suicide. I know he probably won't, but I I you know I I well I, I mean it. it can you call it suicide if it's not intentional? Well, you know, I, I mean, know. I don't just, want when they come when the owners come back. I don't want to have to say, "Did you notice your cat was seriously depressed?" You know, <laughs> I mean, which is the old uh, Truman Capote line. Uh, right, uh, let me tell you something. We're done with cats for the next of these coming up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 but I would love to have a cat, and she would love to have a dog. And I said, "Okay, you can have a dog." But you walk the fucking dog. That, exactly, exactly. You know. That's why I mean I don't have anything against dogs. I think they're pretty wonderful, but you have to walk them at least twice a day, and more is better. Yeah. And what if it's pouring down rain and it's freezing cold, or you've got the flu? Um, you still have to walk the dog. I, not me. Yeah, and they, you know, and then they poop too. You know, and then you got to pick up the poop. And I'm sorry. Well, I'm, you do that with cats too, so not. I, I don't want that. I don't want to clean up the poop. Okay. That's, you know, um, that's it. That doesn't bother me. But the the having to, I'm in the middle of something else, and the dog wants to go out. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or as I said, pouring down rain or all of that other stuff. Hey, we've run out of time. 
another uh, can we have another 25 minutes of I'm our not life i'm so sure this is wildly interesting oh i think it's terrific i think it's terrific take it from me i think it's terrific and people enjoy you and uh uh they they certainly uh on, when you put it up on your site they gobble it up so you know uh, well this one i will post on the anniversary day on wednesday okay ladies and gentlemen this is the former wife of a radio announcer, uh, Ronnie Bennett. Thanks, Ronnie. You're welcome. Thank you.